Hi, my name is Laura Lee Rose and I'm the Corporate Exit Strategist for The Blooming Entrepreneur. And I'm very excited here today to talk to you about a program called the Superior Client Experience Program. And what we're going to do today is actually just outline what this program is going to provide you. The total intent of this program is to bring you whatever level of client service that you have right now. Its intent is to bring you to the next level. And I'm making the assumption that your next level is superior. We're already giving excellence. We want to get to superior or even genius client experience. So how do I get there from where I am? Well, some of the blocks that we normally have are in three categories. Number one, prioritizing procedure over what the client is actually experiencing at that moment. You may say, you may hear yourself saying, well, I'm sorry you feel that way, but this is the process, or this is, our, this is the policy that we have to follow. Um, we want to go beyond the procedure. We want to really kick into that client, high-level client experience. So what do I want to do? Do I want to prioritize the client experience above my procedure? No, what this workshop does is actually integrate and blend your procedures and the client experience. It puts them together as a one, one integral uh, systematic approach. So you don't have to figure out which one I should do. When you follow these procedures, you actually will be giving stellar client experiences. Uh, and then the other part is defending your position. A lot of times I come from a software development background, and a lot of times, myself included, as a developer, we would spend a lot of time defending why the software is doing what it's doing. I don't. The client doesn't really care why the software isn't working for them. They want the software to work for them. They want to accomplish their task with their the, the product. So in our workshop, we actually talk about strategies to avoid defending yourself, mindsets that we have to, to, to position ourselves in, and, and we actually go through um, difficult client scenarios to practice that new behavior. The other third trap is ignoring the client's skill set and knowledge base. I don't know where the client is coming from. I don't know if I'm using the proper terminology. I don't know if they're, I'm talking the same talk. If they're understanding where I'm coming from, maybe they know more about the industry that they're working in than I do. I, I need to understand where they're coming from. So we talked about, in the three traps, we talked about some ways to get out of those traps. And in our workshop, we're going to talk more about that. So the first thing is actually put yourself in their shoes. Uh, and in our workshop, we actually have scenarios and practice sheets on how to do that. The other uh, critical part is setting clear expectations. And this isn't just requirements of the task. It's expectations on how I'm going to work with my client and how I expect the client to work with me. It's a two-way street. And I want to set it up um, up front like that. And then once I have those expectations clearly set, I want to measure against those expectations and success criteria all the way through my relationship with them. Now remember, I want to emphasize that this this interaction between yourself and the client isn't just a product that you're going to hand off at the end of the day. It's actually you're building a, a relationship. Uh, think about this. If I were to keep this client for a lifetime, what's the lifetime value of this particular client if they were to use my services throughout their lifetime? How much would that be worth? So I want to I want to make a, this a client, not just a one-time sale. Okay. So in our workshop and, and uh, program, what we do is we focus on three consistent steps: clarifying their objectives and preferences. We also want to build in our systematic approach. Communication as early and as often as really frequently in our communication plan. And then the third concept that I want to really drive home is setting your integrity. You want to set your principles and your core. You want to identify your vision, your mission and your vision and your integrity. And then any client that comes up, 
you want to match it against your integrity. If it's not a good match, you want to release that client before you even get started. If it's a good match, you know you're going to be um, smooth sailing ahead. So keep your mission and your vision and your integrity intact and everything will be okay. okay. And in our workshop, we'll talk a little bit more about what I mean by setting your, inte your intentions and your integrity, how you want to treat your clients. Okay? So your vision will include understanding your client's situation beyond the task or product they're asking you for. You want to understand the overall reason for their project, the intent, what's their passion, how interrelated are they to the project, how emotionally connected are they to this project. That way you can better emphasize how you want to deal with them in the future. Also, you want to understand their budget constraints, their time constraints, and their resource constraints. You don't know until you ask. Maybe they have several people on their staff that can do several of the tasks that uh, we're talking about. So you might want to, to save them some money by saying, okay, this, this project has five pieces, but you have a couple people that can do piece one and two, and then we can do the rest of the pieces, and that will fit it in your budget or your time constraint. So understanding that up front, you can better build a better requirement and timeline that fits in their budget and time constraints. Time constraint. But if you don't have that understanding up front, you've kind of closed up some of those opportunities and options. And we talked about this earlier, about understanding the client skill set. That would include the terminology they're used to, the background and experience level in this particular field. Uh, so you want to have a good understanding of your client. But where does this come in? Well, you bring all this information in your initial client interview. And if you don't do an initial client interview with these things in mind, that's probably your first mistake. You really want to get on the same page as your client. You want to understand their mission and their vision, but more importantly, the essence of what they're trying to accomplish. Sometimes uh, in the workshop, I'll tell you some scenarios where when clients are focus on a particular task and you don't know what their mission or vision or essence, that task doesn't really accomplish what they're really trying to achieve. So when you finish the task, they're still unhappy because, hey, I did the task, but it didn't accomplish what they really needed. So you really want to sit down and get beyond their particular request and get the idea of what they really want to accomplish. And then once you understand that, keep that in mind. Focus on your client's vision throughout this relationship. But one way to do that is using your active listening skills. And we talk about this in detail in our workshops and we have practice sessions regarding paraphrasing and active listening skills to gather clearer and better requirements as well as to avoid misunderstanding in the future. Okay? In the workshop, we also talk about achievable requirements. Uh, once you have that initial interview, we want to write up the requirements that we seem to understand. And we want to have clear requirements. And this can include sketches, outlines, it can include anything that will eliminate ambiguity. And uh, if you feel that the client is giving you vague requirements, then it's your job to fill in the blanks and have them review it, okay? Nothing's stopping you for, fill, for restating the requirements in a clearer version and then having them review it and approve it. And then in our workshop and, and program, we actually have what I call um, achievable requirement checklist. It's actually a very usable tool, very useful tool to uh, review your requirements against this checklist and it, it will actually help eliminate vague language, ambiguity, and get you started in the right track. The other thing, after you set your requirements, you want to have a requirement mapping session with your client. You want to understand the level of importance of each requirement. 